Hello Ragers, I hope you are all doing well. Now, if you're anything like me, you wake up every morning, put on your $1200 Migos Gallery Department pants, and then look in the mirror and wonder where it all went wrong. How did such a monumentally artsy and insanely cool brand go from being worn by our favorite celebrities, musicians, and influencers to a shell of its former self, and subsequently go out of business? Did Gallery Department fail to capitalize on their success and innovate on their creative direction? Or was Gallery Dep just another generic LA brand all along? Today I will be doing my best Sunny V2 cosplay while we explore how Gallery Dep got the bag and then proceeded to fumble and tumble it. So make sure you like and subscribe for more crazy and unique videos about niche fashion related topics. It's Gallery pants, but they really just leave our pants with the lit thing painted over. So I get to scrubbing this off. These are fucking Levi's. In order to understand the significance of these brilliant paint splattered vintage-esque handcrafted garments, it is important to first gain insight into the world of Gallery Department's founder and creative lead, Josue Thomas. As far back as he can remember, Josue has always been creating. His parents were both into the realm of arts and culture themselves, with his father, Stefan Gilbert, even operating a women's wear label. Josue has stated that he loved seeing the pieces of clothing that his parents had. Through taking an interest in his dad's old Converse and motorcycle jackets, Josue began to gain an appreciation for the unique character that garments developed throughout time as they aged. That meaningful, vintage feeling, combined with personal style, would stay with Josue and eventually serve as core staples of the gallery department brand. Skipping ahead a bit, in his 20s, Josue would go on to work for Ralph Lauren. Although he was in a creative position with the brand, he soon began to feel the limitations associated with working under someone or for something that you didn't own. He basically felt as if there was nowhere for him to go within the brand. The only way for him to be fully in control would be for him to start a project of his own fruition. I know all my viewers are self-made billionaires, but this is certainly a relatable feeling for those who have ever worked a standardized job under the man for a fixed income. As a result of the discontent stemming from his job at Ralph Lauren, Josue began DJing and making music in his free time, as well as crafting reconstructed one-off garments of his own. And he must have been doing something right, as it attracted the attention of Johnny Depp's stylist, who purchased a poncho that Josue made. In a similar vein, Josue attended a trunk show at Chateau Marmont, where he sold out of all the pieces that he had created for the event. Evidently, these positive occurrences led to the spontaneous creation of Gallery Department in 2017. Josue, alongside his good friend Jesse Jones, who is a veteran tailor, would begin reconstructing old garments and putting their own spin on them. Gallery Depth started out reworking vintage shirts, hoodies, trucker hats, and jackets on a made-to-order basis, meaning more often than not, the customer would place an order before the garment was even finished. And as this method found success, Gallery Depth began expanding the variety of garments that they would repurpose. Eventually, they found their major hit, the future cash cow of the brand, which you all know is the reworked Levi's 501 denim and Carhartt pants. Gallery Depth debuted the La Flair denim, which featured a subtle flare at the bottom of the pants, obviously, as well as reinforced stitching and perhaps even added patches or whatever else they saw fitting. They sold a standard version of the pants you could get for around $395 at first, but you could pay a little bit extra, only like $800 more, to have them personally tailored by Josue. Keep in mind, this was around the time when flared denim was coming into trend, so Gallery Depp was in the perfect position to capitalize. However, fashion is constantly in cycle, Nothing trendy can last forever in a post-trend society. But Gallery Depp began to gain a lot of recognition throughout the broad realm of the fashion industry. This can be seen through collaborations with Chrome Hearts, where those infamous $5,000 orange pants were crafted, and also Virgil was a huge supporter of the brand. He was frequently seen sporting Gallery Depp pieces and praising Josue as an individual and a designer on a regular basis. They also garnered recognition from many big name fashion buyers, such as reps for Mr. Porter. And they were even getting repped by Minimal, so that's how you know you've officially made it. It's safe to say Gallery Depp was really coming into their own here, and the artistic and meaningful nature associated with breathing new life into vintage garments through the process of reworking them, combined with a recognizable logo, served as a great formula for success. 2019, 2020, and even into 2021 were great years for the brand. Gallery Dip had two collaborations with the French fashion house L'Envant, which stays true to the exclusive and artsy nature of each brand. Gallery Dip certainly had a very enigmatic, esoteric, mysterious aura surrounding them. Fans never knew what could come next. One day it's a L'Envant collab, and the next it's a Migos collab. It's always good to keep people guessing. 
Now, a bit more on the Migos collab, this was essentially the peak of the brand. On June 9th, 2021, the Migos would announce a collab with Gallery Dep to celebrate and promote the release of their newest album, Culture 3. Prices of the drop ranged from $110 t-shirts to $1,200 pants. The Migos were prior supporters of the brand, so this collaboration made sense. And I feel as if this collab perfectly encapsulated the state of streetwear and music during that time. Streetwear at this time period was obviously saturated with flared denim and vintage blanks, Likewise, the music scene was saturated with artists pairing their album releases with found-in streetwear collabs, and with Culture 3 being an album that is over an hour long, this essentially symbolizes the stale, drawn-out nature of streetwear at the time. With that being said, it was evident that change was necessary. Unfortunately for the fans, Gallery Depp would not adapt. Taking to Instagram a few months later to announce his departure from the fashion industry, Josue shared a heartfelt message. To sum it up, Josue restates how Gallery Depp served to express an artistic critique of the fashion landscape at the time. He strived to combat excess and pollution of the mind and the world as a result of consumerism, and stated how he detests making a disposable product. Much like Demna leaving Vetmont, Josue essentially accomplished everything he wanted to do with Gallery Depp and left on his own terms, which is something that I can respect. He stayed true to himself and the artistic nature of the brand, he remained consistent in his beliefs and didn't want to follow trends. He was truly a man of his word. Those $500 recycling t-shirts were no joke. Gallery Depp would subsequently announce a going out of business sale. And it's all very confusing because in 2022, Gallery Depp did have their second collab with Lon Vaughn, and Josue would go on to create the Chateau Josue Instagram account as well. It's still sort of up in the air, but that does stay true to the elusive nature of the brand. It's all very artsy and mysterious, and we just simply wouldn't get it. Josue has always been more of an artist than a traditional fashion designer, as evident through his many artistic ventures, obviously, with Art That Kills, Stop Being Racist, and Recycle being notable works that were displayed throughout the Gallery Depp store. Josue also created and hosted an art exhibit entitled Riot from August 6th to September 8th of 2021 at the Luis Alexander Gallery in LA, which stays true to his mantra of collaborate, create, rebel. And as a fashion commentary YouTuber and formerly retired meme creator, I believe that one never truly stops being an artist. What's next for Josue, who knows, but whatever he does decide to do, it's clear that he will do it out of passion and as a result of intrinsic motivations, as he has certainly proven his worth as a creative entity. Now, I don't want to discredit the work of Gallery Depp, but I just wanted to briefly touch on this next point as to why Gallery Depp experienced a gradual decline. Reworking old pants is obviously a big part of Gallery Department. I get that Josue and the target audience for Gallery Depp understood that they are more so art than clothes, but once the brand got to a certain point, people started disagreeing with the price point and perhaps didn't fully understand the ethos of the brand. And this happens with pretty much everything once it becomes so popular that it exists beyond itself when it basically leaves its target audience, and this happens with brands or even viral tweets about niche subjects where people just simply don't get it. With Gallery Depp, however, people just viewed it as, oh, you're reselling old pants for a crazy markup. I can do that too. And with this being around the time of the pandemic, people had a lot more free time, so why not pick up a new hobby? That hobby being buying up all of the good Levi's and Carhartts from the local thrift and then posting TikToks about their creative process. At least they weren't buying from Sheen, so technically this does fall in line with the gallery department message of pro recycling, so I can't even be mad. All in all, now we know the deep dark truth about this elusive and niche and obscure brand that few people know about. Next time you're on a date, feel free to recite this video verbatim in an attempt to win your potential lover over. It will surely work and not scare them away. With that being said, thank you for watching and stay tuned until next time. Later, Ragers.